weekly in-depth view of agriculture up close. This is In the Field. Presented by Gordon's Feed and Pet. Herd sire selection is very important when you think about the profitability and success of your beef cattle herd. We met up with Eldon Cole, University of Missouri's livestock specialist, to learn why performance data is so important. So Eldon, your, your life's work has been centered around performance testing here in Southwest Missouri. And you've been on my farm um, well before I was even born. <laughs> and, and you've seen our, our farm um, operate and develop. But the story that we've been able to create on our farm is the same story you've helped many other Southwest Missourians uh, producing beef cattle uh, do also. So tell us, in a nutshell, what do you do? <laughs> Well, we work with both purebred and commercial producers in southwest Missouri to try to improve their cattle genetically and also uh, from a management standpoint. So you are in and out of farms daily? We do get on the farm a lot, but we do have some desk work that we have to do. When we're on the farm, we work with them on performance testing programs, and of course we have the Show Me Select Heifer program that is involved in genetic improvement and we're just trying to improve the beef cattle industry in southwest Missouri. You've been doing this 54 years. How has uh, your work changed and developed over that course of time? Of course a lot of folks didn't even have scales back then and that was one of the first things that we tried to impress on producers in the uh, late 60s was you need a scale if you're going to have cattle you need to measure the information from them as far as weaning weights and yearling weights. Then we got into frame scoring, measuring heights, and uh, that's what uh, kind of kicked all of this off. So you talked about scales and, and how that transformed the industry, but the importance of, of birth weights and weaning weights. Now that's all part of performance data, correct? That is right. We have to have those numbers then now the big thing is to put all those numbers through a computer and help establish what we call EPDs on cattle. And all of this uh, helps us just do a better job of evaluating the performance of the cattle here in this area. EPDs, expected progeny differences, uh, terms we've used interchangeably, I know my entire life, but how do you translate EPDs um, into the cow herds across Southwest Missouri? EPDs are a measure of performance and uh, it's a little complicated sometimes, so that's been a big part of my educational agenda. And uh, I think that uh, the thing that I like now about EPDs is not just so much what the absolute EPD is, but I also like to look at the percentile ranking within the breed. I think that's where we can really uh, simplify it and let the producers understand it a little more clearly. And one of the most important times that EPDs are utilized is when selecting herd bulls. And twice a year, you have this tested bull sale, and that's where we are tonight. Let's go see some of those bulls. So these consigners are coming from all over southwest Missouri, but what are the qualifications that uh, are needed for them to sell here? First of all, they have to be purebred, registered animals. We do take crossbreds or composites. The yearling weight in the requirement is 1,100 pounds at 365 days and a frame score of five, six, somewhere along in that range. Can't be under a five. Now, we also have entered the EPD world and we have some requirements as far as bulls must meet certain standards on calving ease, weaning weight, yearling weight, um, milk carcass uh, muscling, and carcass uh, marbling. I think there are six traits that we want the animal to be at least in the top half percentile rank for that breed. So this sale started in 1973 and you've been a part of it. So how have you seen the trends change and the adoption of these performance data influence the commercial and purebred buyers here in the area? Well, it has changed an awfully lot. We back then were mainly looking at growth rates. 
Yearling weight was one criteria that we emphasized. We started measuring frame size in before we even had a frame score stick. We didn't know a lot about frame, but everybody felt we needed to be getting the cattle taller, stretchier, and uh, less fat on them than we had been looking at previously. We also still put a lot of emphasis on confirmation of the cattle. We had a kind of an antiquated grading system as we look back now. That's where we started in 1973. And now everybody knows about EPDs. We're getting into genomic testing and that's where the future lies, as far as I'm concerned. Now, I know that education is such a huge component. You're educating the producer selling, but also those buyers. So explain how that all works. With difficulty. <laughs> yes, we, uh, we've tried everything known to man, I think, to try to get people aware of EPDs. Now we're talking the genomic testing and it, it's a real challenge because a lot of people think, I really don't trust that, I don't believe that. But uh, there are little inroads that we've been able to make over the years and uh, I think we're making some progress and people are adopting these methods of evaluating cattle. And of course I always try to emphasize that the more information that they have on their own cow herd, the easier it is to go to a tested bull sale like we have here this evening and uh, pick out the bull that complements their herd. Whether your goals are centered around a commercial or purebred operation, when it's time to buy your next herd bull, don't forget to look at the numbers.